Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A certain man made a great supper and invited many. In the Gospel of this day, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we read that a rich man prepared a great supper. He then ordered one of his servants to invite to it all those who he should find in the highway, even though they were poor, blind, and lame, and to compel those who should refuse to come to this very supper. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled, he said. And he added that all those who had been invited and had not come, not one should ever partake of his supper. But I say unto you, that none of those men that were invited shall taste of my supper. What is this supper then? Is it not this great supper of holy communion, at which all the faithful are invited to eat the sacred flesh of Jesus Christ in the most holy sacrament of the altar? Take ye and eat, this is my body, he says in the scripture. This is the feast of feasts which we celebrated Thursday past the feast, the great solemnity of Corpus Christi, whereby we adore our Lord in his body, blood, soul, and divinity. What more could Jesus give to men, dear brothers and sisters in Christ? Not only does he call them into existence, but in order to help them to reach their final end, which is himself in paradise at the end of their terrestrial life, He gives to mankind not only the church, the angels, the saints, and even his blessed mother, but he goes beyond this in generosity. How? By giving us the sublime gift of his very self in the Holy Eucharist. Oh, the great love which Jesus Christ has shown us in giving himself in this sacrament. Jesus, knowing that his hour was come, that he should pass out of the world to the Father. Having loved his own that were in the world, he loved them until the end. We read in the evangelist St. John. Knowing that the hour of his death had arrived, Jesus Christ wished before his departure from this world to leave us the greatest proof which he could give of his love by leaving us himself in the Holy Eucharist. He loved them to the end. That is, according to St. John Chrysostom, with an extreme love. If faith had not taught it, who could ever imagine that God would become man and afterwards become the food for his own creatures? When Jesus Christ revealed, remember, in the Gospels, in John chapter 6, When he revealed to his followers this sacrament which he intended to leave, they could not bring themselves to believe it and departed from him, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? This saying is hard, and who can hear it? But what men could not imagine the real love of Jesus Christ has invented and effected. Take ye and eat, this is my body, he said. These words he addressed to these apostles on the night before he suffered, and he now, after his death, addresses them to each and every one of us. Jesus thus is consumed as a sacrifice on the cross, which brings to a conclusion the sacrifice initiated at the Last Supper. In the Holy Communion, Jesus gives us not part of his arm, but his entire body in the sacrament of the altar. The great doctor of the church, St. Thomas of Aquinas, teaches that in the Eucharist, 
It is the sacrament par excellence. God has given us all that he is and all that he has. Just see then the same saint called the Eucharist the sacrament of love and a pledge of love. Sacramentum caritatis pignus caritatis, he said. It is a sacrament of love because it was pure love that induced Jesus Christ to give us this gift and pledge of love. For he wished that, should a doubt of his having loved us ever enter into our minds, we should have in this sacrament the pledge of his love. This is the good news today. Jesus Christ gives himself to us in the Holy Eucharist. Saint Bernard calls this the sacrament, the love of loves, amor amorum. By his incarnation, Jesus Christ our Lord has given himself to men in general, but in the sacrament of sacraments, the Eucharist, he has given himself to us each in a particular way to make us understand the special love which he entertains for each of us. How ardently does Jesus Christ desire to come into our souls in holy communion? This vehement desire he expresses at the time of the institution of this sacrament when he said, remember to the apostles, with desire I have desired to eat this Pasch with you. Saint Laurent Justinian says that these words proceeded from the enamored heart of Jesus Christ, who by such tender expressions wished to show us the ardent love with which he loved us. This is the voice of the most burning charity. And to induce us to receive him frequently in the Holy Communion, he promises eternal life, that is the kingdom of heaven, to those who eat his flesh. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. This is the great feast we celebrate, Corpus Christi, and this is the grace we ask for Our Lady this day of a a deep reverence for this holy sacrament and a deep love of Jesus Christ in this sacrifice, this sacrament, and a great belief in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the most blessed sacrament. Yesterday, we celebrated the great feast of the Franciscan doctor and miracle worker, St. Anthony of Padua, if you don't know. Here we can relate a beautiful story in his life which relates to the true presence of Jesus Christ in the most blessed sacrament. Saint Anthony of Padua lived in the 13th century and possessed a great zeal for the real presence of Jesus in the most holy Eucharist. One day Saint Anthony heard a man in Rimini named Bonilio who did not share the same belief. In fact, Bonino openly mocked people who believed that Jesus was truly present under the appearance of bread and wine. Saint Anthony, though, tried his hardest to convince Bonino with the proofs of scripture and argument, but discovered that this man was stubborn as a mule. Then Saint Anthony received an inspiration. He challenged the worth wealthy merchant if the mule, the mule you ride adored the body of Christ in the Eucharist, would you believe in the truth of the Blessed Sacrament? Bonigno agreed but decided to raise the stakes. Bonigno would starve his mule for three days and then bring it to the town square. Saint Anthony of Padua would bring the Blessed Sacrament to the same square. The mule would be put in front of a pile of hay and Saint Anthony would stand a few yards away with the Blessed Sacrament. What happened next would decide the victor. This is what happened. The man came with the mule, which had been starved for three days. Saint Anthony stood some distance away. And then when they let the mule loose, instead of going towards this large pile of hay, turned round on its hind legs and adored Jesus Christ in the most blessed sacrament and Bonigno, the owner of the mule, had a deep conversion. 
We read also in the scriptures today, many people make excuses not to attend the banquet, the banquet of life, the sacrament of sacraments. Some say they have a farm to attend to. Some say they have oxen to look after. And one man even said he has been married, so he cannot attend the banquet. Let us ask Our Lady this day for the grace to always recognize Jesus, the real presence in the most holy sacrament, and have a great love for the Holy Mass. Let us ask Our Lady, our Queen and Mother, to show us how to receive her Son. Better still, why not follow the formula, this magnificent formula of Saint Louis Grignard de Montfort in his true devotion to Mary, to ask to lend the very immaculate heart of Mary to receive Jesus Christ in the most perfect and humble way possible. If we put this into practice, then we can start living heaven whilst here on this earth. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.